Welcome to NTN Nightly. I'm Huma Dimark. This edition Top Stories. Government to improve conditions at the respiratory hospital as soaring COVID-19 cases increase patient intake. A public-private partnership that benefits the youth of Poa Show. And Karakum to pool resources to assist Haiti in the aftermath of two natural disasters. The government of St. Lucia is actively working to improve capacity and conditions at the respiratory hospital. The Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, Honorable Moses Shabatist, recently informed of the government's plans to upgrade the primary COVID-19 care facility. The announcement comes as the nation grapples with a surge in COVID-19 cases. Conditions at the Victoria Hos Hospital are not acceptable. We are working with the administrator of the hospital, and also Dr. Eugene, who is responsible for the clinical operations at the hospital. Additional staff is being mobilized, improvements to the oxygen supply system, installation of better communication equipment, assessment of and improved improvement to the supply of medicines, and an attempt to seamlessly connect the Victoria Hospital to the isolation operations in the field. Relatives of patients who are admitted to the Victoria Hospital speak of many gaps in the system which we must help the administrator and staff to fill and we are working to fill the gaps. Minister for Health and Wellness, Honorable Moses Jabatis. And with the number of active COVID-19 cases over 1,100, the government of St. Lucia has revised the COVID-19 protocols. Cabinet approved the adjustments upon recommendations from the command center. The changes to the protocols take effect from Friday, August 20, 2021, until Tuesday, August 31st, 2021. They include adjustments to the curfew. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. with closure of businesses at 8 p.m one hour before the commencement of the curfew. B, Fridays and Saturdays from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. with closure of businesses at 6 p.m. C, Sundays from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. with closure of businesses at 3 p.m. Two, that public sector construction activities will be removed from the list of essential services. And three, that all other measures remain the same. Health Minister Honorable Moses Jabaptis. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs is implementing measures to ensure that vaccines are available to all whom are eligible to receive them. Vaccination will continue at the various vaccination sites and wellness centers across the island, alongside the mobile vaccination drive in communities. In the coming weeks, vaccines will also become available at selected private sector health facilities. As of Monday, August 23, 2021, the Pfizer vaccine will be available at the vaccination sites for persons 12 years and older. Parents or guardians should accompany children under 18 years. Assistant Principal Nursing Officer Tekla Jabaptis says vaccinating children will protect them from COVID-19 infection, particularly the Delta variant, which is known to cause serious infection in young people. The schedule for the vaccination sites are as follows. Grosile Human Resource Center, Mondays and Fridays. The VG Sports Complex, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. The Binfield Secondary School, until Thursday, 26 August, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sufre Hospital Grounds, Mondays and Fridays. Denry Mothers Preschool, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, the Jack Mill Wellness Center on Fridays, and the People Discounts Pharmacy on Tuesdays on Victoria Street and Thursdays on St. Louis Street. Nurse Abatis says until widespread vaccination has been achieved, both vaccinated and unvaccinated people need to be aware that the additional protective behaviors are required to control the pandemic. 
In other developments, the children of the Foasho community enrolled in the after-school program now have a new agricultural program to look forward to after a number of donors pooled resources for a backyard kitchen garden. More in this Chevroy Marius report. Children from the Foasho community enrolled in the community after-school program class will now have a new agricultural elective to look forward to after receiving an in-kind donation from Mr. Ira Duvey for the use of a plot of land directly behind the community center to commence a CASP backyard kitchen garden. The program was also gifted with a check of EC $3,500 from Sanders Foundation and EC $500 from the St. Lucia National Lottery for the plot preparation. The ceremony was held on Tuesday, August 17, 2021 at the Foa Community Center. Social Transformation Officer and Backyard Kitchen Garden Coordinator, Mrs. Fedora Alcindor, stated that the green space component of the project arose from the realization that children in the community have no outdoor space to learn, develop and play. Um, so having this space where, you know, they can just step out of their home and go into this green space, we know the impact just being in the outdoors, how beneficial it is for your mental health. So creating this avenue where the children can have this space to go out and to engage, um, not only in play, but in cultivating crops and seeing that crop germinate from a seed to an actual fruit and to, you know, be able to eat and provide for their, their homes because it's going to be a kitchen garden. So we're hoping that the produce that they will um, get from the garden, it would go to helping to reduce the expenses in terms of what they buy in the market. Sanders' manager stated that the creation of this backyard kitchen garden project will strengthen community pride, foster a deeper sense of community spirit, and provide a safe space for the children of the community to play and develop relevant skills in sustainable gardening. We identify with the objectives for these initiatives. And as you say, this, this project promises to positively impact the community in several ways, namely encouraging community pride and fostering a deeper sense of community spirit and providing, very importantly, safe space for children of the community to play and grow. If this means that they will no longer use the main road as their playground while also developing relevant skills in sustainable gardening, then we're happy to provide support and to move along with you. For the children of Fawn Shu, the hospital route served as a playground, but now the green space will offer an alternative space for farming activities, which would keep them away from the busy hospital road. The managing director has also pledged their support for the implementation of community after-school program backyard kitchen gardens in Marsha, Wilton's Yard, and Chase Gardens. I believe from what I've just heard, that you're also working in a number of other communities, including Wilton Yard and others. I would like to share with you this morning that I'm pleased to hear that because these communities are very dear to our hearts because it brings us closer to children. And we believe strongly that if we can give one child the opportunity for a better life, that one child will be saved. I also understand that you're planning to work in the Marshall Chase Garden this year. So first I want to wish you success with these projects and by extension, I want to extend our full support also. Deputy Director in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and the People's Empowerment, Mr. Jim Xavier, Welcome to this initiative. Oh, I'm extremely delighted because this is a demonstration of what community partnering, the ministry and the private sector can do to elevate a community. So we are happy that Sanders has come on board and the project is going to be launched tomorrow actually. And so we could have the green space and then they could start planting the items and taking care of it. 
and at least getting that sort of social cohesion and community togetherness that is important for a project of that nature. Well, the ministry has a broad mandate. One of it is to work with vulnerable communities to help them to improve their standard of living and the, the level of confidence and social being. And this project speaks to a number of the mandates um, in terms of eradication of poverty, empowering people, um, getting persons involved in their development and decisions affecting them. So this is an excellent project. Through the Ministry of Agriculture, the children will obtain watermelons, tomatoes, honeydew and lettuce seedlings. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment, I am Chevre Marius. Conditions in Haiti post last Saturday's 7.2 magnitude earthquake and this week's tropical storm Grace is occupying the attention of Caracom. The president of Suriname this week held discussions with the new Caracom Secretary General on assistance to Haiti. More from Kendall Morgan from Caracom News Time. The president of Suriname, His Excellency Chandrika Pasad Sentoki, says CARICOM must do what it can to assist Haiti to overcome the challenges it is facing. Speaking during a courtesy call on the new CARICOM Secretary General, Her Excellency Carla Barnett, at the CARICOM Secretariat's Georgetown Guyana headquarters on Wednesday, the president emphasized that Haiti must not be left behind. Haiti was struck by a catastrophic earthquake last Saturday, which has claimed around 2,000 lives, and a tropical storm on Tuesday, which hampered recovery activities. President Santoki said that CARICOM must work with hemispheric and wider international partners to ensure that democracy, democratic institutions, and the rule of law are maintained in Haiti. He expressed his country's full support to the integration movement and to the new Secretary General, Dr. Barnett, who took up the post on Monday. The President, who was accompanied by Suriname Foreign Minister His Excellency Albert Ramdin, took the opportunity to invite Dr. Barnett to Suriname. Secretary General Barnett welcomed the President to the headquarters and agreed that Haiti was a priority for the community and described the situation there as very painful. The Secretary General informed the President that the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CDEMA, was already engaged with its counterpart in Haiti to assist in the recovery. She also agreed with the other priorities which the President put on the table, which included the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the need for vaccination, the pursuit of post-pandemic economic recovery, and the climate change. Dr. Barnett indicated that the community recognized the importance of the upcoming United Nations Climate Change Conference COP26 in the United Kingdom and was organizing to ensure that it would be well prepared for the negotiations. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. We can win this war. Get vaccinated. We're taking our life back. Get vaccinated. The COVID-19 vaccination drive is mobile and coming to you. There you can get the vaccine. It will protect you from developing severe outcomes of COVID-19 and make you less likely to spread the virus to others. It will also help you get your life back. Most of all, you will be doing your part to help St. Lucia bounce back from this pandemic. Visit the Ministry of Health and Wellness and Bureau of Health Education Facebook pages for the mobile vaccine schedule. And let's take our life back. Get vaccinated. This message is brought to you by the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We now join Prime Minister Hutchinson for the Antien Nouvelle Acquiel. Monsieur, Madame, Department, Kinivers Consabilité pour Information en Gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, à Sambepi, Télévision Nationale, puis à Antien, qui vous êtes au Nouvelle Acquiel, vous êtes au Prime Hutchinson. Après, Premier ministre Honorable Philippe J. Pierre, a semble que le ministre des Affaires Santé et des Affaires les plus grands citoyens, on a besoin de Baptiste, de une consultation. Et puis les journalistes, j'ai dit bon matin, parce que j'ai dit passé, concernant la situation maladie COVID à cette liste, le ministre de Santé et le Premier ministre là, trouvé un rapport, un rapport, un sac de commande pour la maladie Corona. À cette direction qui est sa point pour essayer de corriger la maladie de ça là en cette liste. 
Selon le ministre de la Santé, on a dit que je suis un homme qui a fait cette commande concernant le changement et le changement du protocole et le règne pour essayer de réduire les dégâts de la maladie de la santé. À présent, ça c'est à présent. Alors, il était nécessaire pour l'été adresser nation concernant ces démarches nouveaux qui en place. Le cabinet la joint avec le cabinet la d'accord pour faire changement avec ces changements là, ces questions nous qu'a joint sorti la main professionnelle. Ces ces changements ça qu'a pris cours depuis vendredi 20 à ou avec yo qu'a bout mardi 31 à ou. Avec ces changements là qu'a aller comme ça. Lundi pour jeudi, que tu as neve pour 4 heures bon matin. Avec tout business qui est fermé 8 heures au soir. Ça, c'est une heure de temps avant que tu as commencé. Vendredi, avec samedi, que tu as 7 heures pour 4 heures bon matin. Avec business qui est fermé 6 heures. On soit. Dimanche, que vous avez 4 heures, les après-midi, pour 4 heures, les bon matin. Avec business qui est fermé 3 heures après-midi. Vous avez fait construction, il n'y a pas de faire essential service avec toute activité construction qui est pour suivre toutes ces lèvres qui sont en toutes ces lèvres neuf là qui en kofiwa. Toutes les autres bagay qui te en dernier protocole la, kai a dit dans protocole neuf sala. Ministre Santé Jean-Baptiste fait appel pour tout cet lycéen obéi et suivre ce protocole et ce wèk qui gouvernement j'a implémenté pour aider à protéger le pays la contre maladie corona. A nous protéger comme nous, à nous protéger famille nous, avec à nous pas de marche pour protéger comme nous. Ces vaccins sont avélables avec depuis lundi, ces vaccins Pfizer qui sont avélables. Avec le ministre, qui sont avélables avec les vaccins Pfizer aussi. Parce que ça nous a fait un chai de gens qui sont malades avec les COVID-19 à Brisan. Nous avons demandé tout le monde pour prendre vaccin. Avec nous avons demandé pour aider les gens en ces communes pour suivre ce protocole avec point vaccinant pour nous doubler bout affaires COVID-19 et manière qui a amélioré ces communes et manière qui a détruit la vie nous en cette liste. Le gouvernement a décidé pour encourager les pays là, en particulier en cette commune, pour jouer un plus fort rôle en développement. Le ministre de la responsabilité pour l'égalité et la justice sociale, honorable Joachim Henry, dit qu'il n'y a pas qu'à en tumulé à ces divers développements qui ne peuvent à ces pays là Mais qui encourager encouragé le peuple pour prendre plus de responsabilité pour faire eux même Le représentatif du Parlement pour le Paris Sud-Est Castro dit qu'il y a facilité pour le peuple très engagé en consultation avec l'autre qualité de développement qui a pris un coup en ces pays là en tout le monde. Il est important pour, pour nous, en gouvernement, ça là, encourager les gens parler, participer à ces affaires. So, à de manière, les gens même qui sont plus confortables en décision qui a fait parce qu'ils ont participé à ça. Dernièrement, M. le ministre, quel est le commissaire de la commission pour ces places-là Moi, ça va, ou peut-être être embarrassé à présent, ou peut-être pas ça avec tout le monde, mais vous, la commission, c'est pour nous qui avez C'est un cercle qui a fait sa office. Sa place côté moi, mais c'est Pepsi Mouna, moi, mais Moun, avec moi, ça dit Ilage, avec la Nyo Chai Moun, qui est la Nyo presque 30 000 Moun, avec, il est difficile pour tout le monde, mais moi, quand je fais, moi, quand je fais une décision, moi, tous les semaines, pour passer en deux fois, quatre, quatre, comme constituency, de mes pas dire, moi, quand je fais une journée, à coup de temps, Semaine pour cher, les dix mardi, mais qu'il dix semaines pour cher, moi qui ai Cronlands, l'autre moi qui dis, moi qui ai des efforts, c'est à place moi même côté famille moi qui ai été, moi qui ai fait whole journée là, côté moi qui ni chance là pour parler avec chacun monde, parce que là ni grand citoyen, 
qui voulait ouais moi mais il passe à venir baisser côté constituency office là y avion Caribbean Airlines commencé encore encore service avion pour cette ci ça c'était lundi le 16 août 2021 service ça là qui sorti hors aéroport Fiaco International en Trinidad pour l'aéroport George F. Charles à cette ici et que ça a marché premier voyage avion depuis 2020, il a été fermé destination pour cette ici en résultat des maladies corona. Ministre des Affaires touristiques à cette ici, honorable Dr. Ernest Hiller, en CBP, les autorités des affaires touristiques à cette ici, bienvenue en l'autre service touristique pour la place cette ici. À l'année 2019, ces pays caribéens là c'était deuxième plus grand la place touristique pour cette ci et que pays Trinidad a enregistré plus que 18 900 personnes qui ont visité cette ci On voit Dr. Hiller et grand grec des affaires la place à autorité touristique cette ci Christopher Gustav, présenté capitaine American Airlines, ça c'est Dale Harrison. Il y a un plat de l'honneur qui a porté l'image des grands pitons de cette ci Dr. Hiller, Féliciter ce service là pour qu'il retourne cette ci et bienvenue les étrangers et cette ci qui a retourné à pays à sortir de Trinidad. Il fait comprendre que destination est très important pour cette ci Il a ajouté aussi que c'est un propriétaire touristique cette ci qui a bien apprécié la visitation. Les Grecs Caribbean Airlines étaient très appréciables aussi pour des Grecs qui ont aussi vrai et ni espoir que bon gymnase ça là qui continue de dépassager de ou se cadeau spécial et ses premiers trois passagers aussi qui te débattu de aussi ou se voit attaque des appréciations avion Caribbean Airlines qui a poursuivi service tous les semaines et vendredi avion qui a quitté Fiaco à 5 minutes après 10 heures bon matin et qui a posé à l'aéroport George Fell Charles à celle-ci à 11 heures Bon matin. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle là. Je vais remercier autant pour vous regarder. Je vais vous une invitation pour jouer un peu encore. C'est de conserver la vie. Je vais vous poser une autre nouvelle à Coyol. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement de semaine. Et comme toujours, je vous prie pour caution contre la maladie de la Sanitize, lavez la main, enfin, faites toutes ces qualités qui sont nécessaires pour protéger correct la femme ou la nation. Et après ça, je vais vous poser une autre Merci à Phil Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You could catch up with us anytime on the Government of St. Lucia Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Huma Dimarque.